What's up, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader here with Roland Wolf. How's, How's life? How's, How's life, going, man? Tim? Yeah, going we're here in Arizona for a few days, checking out the the local spots. You played golf with everybody yesterday? Yeah, I got a little round in with some trader friends. It was good. So you actually trade in the morning and then often play golf in the afternoon. This is like most people's dreams. Yeah, I mean, since I'm on the West Coast, we start at 6.30 a.m. is when the market opens and it closes at one. Yeah. So if I've done my job correctly, Oftentimes, if I've done my job correctly, I can leave at like 9 a.m. and go play around and then come catch the market. I oh. saw the other day, like you made like what? Like I, I saw like two or $3,000 yeah. and then you just went to go play golf. Yeah, just go play around and golf. The markets have been a little bit slower over the last week or so, so. And that's good. That's what I do. How much have you made in 2020? 2020, I've done just over 300K now. Nice. Yeah. Say that confidently. Don't say it like, yeah, just 300K. Well, I mean, you know, in the context of the year and what we've seen and in retrospect at times. 300 grand. Leave a comment below if you want to make 300 grand in a year, if that's okay for you or you don't have to look down on that. But I get it. There's a lot of opportunities. Also, click the link below. Uh, you can sign up for Roland's new newsletter. It is fantastic, especially if you just want to, you know, really just trade right near the market open. Like, I love that. Like, you're like, you're like a sniper, you know? Explain but, to them what it is. Why do you like trading near the market open? Well, a lot of it came down to tracking my trades and finding where I was most profitable. That's first of all. Second of all, volatility. I mean, as a day trader, that's what we're looking for is volatility. And I find the most volatile times are gonna be the first hour and a half, two hours of the day, and then market close pretty much the last hour of the day. Uh, so that's when I like to be there. Beyond that, once the liquidity goes away and the volume goes down a little bit, it gets choppy and I don't like to sit around for that. And you like to go golfing. And I like to golf. And you, and you hang out with your kids too. And I spend a lot of time with my kids. That's cool. That's another thing. Like a lot of people think like, oh, trading is just about how much money you can make. It's also quality of life. If you like to golf, if you have a family, if you want to spend more time, like you can work from home. I know a lot of people um, have said like, this has made their relationship better, right? Like, I think actually it might've been you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it did in a major, I mean, relationships are tough. Be careful with know, what you say here. I, I, my wife will probably watch it, so I do have to be careful. <laughs> She's the best, but I mean, it's, it's a matter of, it's a fact that when financial times get tough, you know, it's, it's a, bird, it's a burden on the family. It's a burden on relationships. It's stressful. It can get really stressful. And, uh, and a lot of that was- Especially fixed. when you have a lot of kids. Three kids, yeah. Rabbits. And, and money doesn't solve, it didn't solve everything. You know, I mean, it's not that kind of thing, but those external stresses that are really stressful when you're, when you're trying to live. Well, when you have a lot of rabbits, you gotta feed them. You know, yeah, they so, eat a lot of greens so and carrots. So now it's just, you know, it's, it's not so bad these days. And you built your own dream home too. Yeah. It is. I mean, is it bigger than before or same size? Yeah, it's about double the size of our last house. Um, we we live well within our means, so I mean, yeah, but it's, it's a nice house. That's cool. This is what I want for everybody. OK, it's not just like a video game, like, oh, how high can you, you know, score? Like how much money can you make? What is your life going to be like with the market? Some people, I think, are actually a slave. You want to talk about that? Like where, you know, we've talked about how you play golf, you have, you know, this great family, you're still making six figures per year. But some people, I think, like, they just, they, they become obsessed with the market. And then, like, I got into the trading, and I think a lot of you will get into trading for the freedom, and you lose all your freedom focusing only on money. And then when you try to make so much money, you often lose. It's like golf, right? Like you can't just try to hit a golf ball as hard as you can. There's more at work, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a sweet spot. Everyone has their own trading styles. But for me, I find that, okay, first of all, let me rewind. If you're new and you're learning, I don't think that you can be in front of your computer enough. That's Study what, up. That's what I think. In the beginning, but not all the time. Yeah. Because he, you studied 17 hours a day and people were like, I can't do that. In the beginning, you're playing a game of catch up. Whether you study 17 hours a day or 14 or 10 or five, it's all about how long it takes to get you to catch up so that you can be better prepared when there are opportunities. In 2020, you were prepared. A lot of people weren't. Yeah, and I was prepared back in 2017 because I had put in the work in 2016 and early 2017. But it, I, I think about this thing that Kobe talked about. Uh, there's a great interview where he talks about how he got to where he was. He shortened his curve by spending more time. So instead of sleeping in the morning, he was up two or three hours before the other kids, you know, shooting around. And uh, maybe not the first week, but over the span of six months, that divergence between you and everyone else gets greater and greater. And that's really, uh, 
same applies to trading. And this is why, frankly, we teach. We're here to help you speed up your learning curve. Learn from me, learn from Roland, speed everything up. Some people are like, no, I don't wanna like learn multiple strategies. Yes, you should. Take a little something from every successful trader, speed up your learning curve so that if and when there's another hot market like 2020, you're better prepared. If you only learn a little bit, let's say you only put in like 20 minutes a day, you're like, I, I found my one pattern, I'm not gonna care about anything else. What if another pattern pops up? What if a hot market pops up and you're not prepared? That's wasted opportunity. What we teach is how to capitalize on opportunity. And it's not one size fits all, right? Like you like gap and craps. I like morning panic dip buys. They're similar, but slightly different. We've utilized what we have learned and we've refined it and made it work for us. That's what this is. It's about how can you make the stock market work for you? If you click the link below, you're gonna learn from what Roland has learned. That can only speed up your learning curve. How else can they, they speed it up? Like what are some secrets? Cause you've learned a lot all in just a few years. Yeah, I mean, obviously what we just spoke about which is putting the time in. Um, everyone, uh, not everyone, but a majority of students that I work with and people that I speak with just aren't willing to do that. And maybe the passion's not there or whatever else it is. But if it's something that you want, uh, you really have to give your all to it, all your time, all your energy, give up Netflix, give up partying, give up drinking. Uh, that's what I did for an entire year. I gave up everything. But now you can, and you brought me some White Claws, yeah, which yeah. I have to try later, but I can't <laughs> drink for craft anymore. Um, that is so important. You, you want to make millions of dollars, but how hard are you willing to study? How bad do you actually want it? Some people meet me and they're like, oh, I'm meeting a real live millionaire. Like I'm like some exotic bird or endangered species. Like I'm just an average person. Roll is just an average person, but he crossed over a million dollars, okay? I just recently closing in on nearly six million. Tim Grittani has made nearly 13 million. We're all just regular people, but we found patterns and we found trades and we've had losses too, but the gains are bigger than our losses. What's like your average loss? Talk about my that. My average loss is somewhere between three and $500 if I'm doing my job right. And what's your average gain? Somewhere between 1,500 and 2K. So think about that. His average dollar gain is three to four times as much as his average loss, and he's winning more than he loses on a percentage basis. So if your dollar gains are bigger and your percentage gains are bigger, it's statistically impossible not to grow your account. But it's very difficult if you don't cut losses quickly, if your losses grow to 3,000 or 5,000. So you can't just get sloppy, you can never get cocky. Yes, he's turned 4,000 into over a million, but if you just say, oh, I know everything, I've made millions now, let me just throw out my risk, it's a very slippery slope. Are you ever afraid of that happening? Yeah, and for me, it's one of those things with the family, I can't, I can't be that risky. And so everything to me, comes down to my kids and family. So I'm not, you know, I'm not a bachelor just running a gun in right now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, those so bachelors are dangerous. <laughs> but I, so I can't take that much risk in other words, in, in my eyes. Um, now I have, been able to, I have been able to size when the time is right, but for the most part, you know, I'm making sure my risk is minimal and that I'm, and that I'm cutting my loss when I'm supposed to because that whole risk reward thing is great, but if you don't have discipline and you're not cutting your losses where you're supposed to, then that risk reward immediately gets screwed in a different direction. Yeah, so. it's not just about like your overall gains, you know, it's also like what kind of risk, what kind of stress do you have? You know, it's not enough just to make a lot of money. I'm very proud of all of my top students because we've all remained, you know, rather humble and conservative. We're not using leverage, we're not going all in. You can still make millions of dollars with low risk strategies when you really focus on rule number one. So, click the link below, learn all about Roland's new service, please study it, learn from it, see what he does right, see what he does wrong, implement things into your own strategy, learn from me too, okay? You try to take a little of everything and you find what works best for you and you find what not to do. If you are losing, if you have losses, don't regret them, they're part of your journey. You have to say, okay, I lost here, I lost big here, let me not do that. And it's easy for us to say like, you know, cut losses quickly, don't have big losses, but until you actually experience it and feel how bad it is like the worst thing ever, we don't want that for you. We wanna teach you to avoid that, 
Trust me, trust Roland. This is how it's done. There's a process. Click the link below and leave a comment below to what drives you. You know, it was your family that really drove you to get into study and, you know, pushing yourself and really like getting obsessed with this. For me, I mean, I kind of fell into it, but then I'm a perfectionist. I want to try to do my best at everything. What drives you? Are you a perfectionist? Do you want to do this for family? Do you want to set up your own charity? Do you want to travel? Do you want nice things? There's no wrong answer, but find your motivation and then use that to challenge yourself. Congrats on your success, man. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. We want more!